Hi, welcome to Ski North America. We are going to do some fine liner drawing and some little watercolor with the cool watercolor technique, which I'll teach you all about. So some of the supplies we need are some pen watercolors, maybe a couple of paintbrushes, um, round top preferably. I always like to have a little bucket of water close by, a cloth to wipe um, your brush on in between, and your testing page. So this little strip of paper here is a good testing page for colors, uh, especially this brand, Micador brand for your pen watercolors. They're quite dark, so it's always nice to have a little sheet of paper. You can just double check the colors or if you're making a custom one. So you'll need your template. We've got some different techniques on there pencil and eraser, and these micron pens. Now, these aren't necessary. You can just use a fine liner, but it's very important that it is a permanent ink one, waterproof. And I like this, um, just like a yogurt lid uh, or a hummus lid, and the just helps you do a uh, circle template. So I've done it with half of a paper. So an A4 size, sheet of paper and I've sliced that in half. You could do a bigger one if you want, if you had a bigger circle template, but I am just going to use half a paper. So you could do a couple of them this way rather than one big one, so up to you. So I'm just going to use my pencil for this. You could use um, a marker, one of your, your fine liners and have a permanent circle or you could use a pencil and then erase the pencil line after just to stay in the circle it's up to you okay on the template i have three different fine line pens that i'm using a micron 0.5 millimeter micron 0.4 and a 0.3 you can see the difference in the uh, detail ability if you only wanted to purchase one i would go for maybe a four 04 or 02 the finer the more options this sun here i've done all in pointillism the moon i've done in cross hatching and then the trees i've actually used the 0.5 the 08 the chalet if you just break it down into shapes so we've got a triangle a long skinny rectangle and then a wider rectangle and then inside there, a bunch of other squares, triangles, and rectangles. So it's a lot easier to break it down in shapes and look at it and say, oh, I can't draw that. And I'll, I'll go through the steps with you. So we're gonna start with pencil, and then we can erase the pencil lines when we trace over. So you have a foreground, midground, and background to keep mind of. And in the foreground, I'm just gonna do sort of slightly waved lines overlapping, just indicate some fresh snow that has fallen. And then we're going to draw our chalet, our ski chalet. So we have a little rectangle here at the bottom. And then for, I guess it's like the balcony here, it'll be a smaller, skinnier rectangle and then we'll fill it in with details after. And then the roof, a lot of the roofs of the ski chalets have um, this A-frame style. So it's a really tall pointed roof. There's usually a loft up there where you sleep. It's quite nice actually. And then we'll do some details around the roof line. The little chimney here, again, just almost like a, a rectangle shape. And then we're going to start filling in the frame of the balcony, the windows up at the top. So the chalets, um, they're the, you'll see them if you um, Google ski chalets or lakeside chalets um, in northern Canada and around the U.S. They have a lot of windows to let in that beautiful natural light. Uh, a lot of them will have multiple windows. So that's what I've tried to do is include a lot of sort of skylights, windows, big windows all over this chalet. And then a lovely little balcony here to 
in the summer months, they would u- utilize this um, to have, you know, al fresco lunches and brunches. And then a big bay window here overlooking the, the mountains or the lake, whatever, whatever they're looking at. And we will do all of those um, shading details after, afterwards with the marker. It's just good to have the pencil here first to indicate the general shapes and placements of things. So then if we make a mistake, we can erase it. In the um, the texture, the marker pen, we can add all of our finer details once we have the, the general shape laid out. And we're gonna do some swirling smoke up here and just going to draw it up to the edge of the circle template. So again, you can um, go around that circle with the um, permanent marker or we can erase that line after. It's totally up to you on the style that you'd like. And it looks like somebody's home. So we're gonna put a couple skis here, just leaning up against the cabin and the ski poles. So somebody's home, they're done off of the, the ski hills and they're coming down for what we like to call a prey ski. So you're having a nice um, drink or hot cocoa by the fireplace and warming up after being out in the cold air in the mountains. Okay, so let's work on our mid middle ground and our background. So I'm not going to draw the trees. I'm just going to do sort of the, the, the center lines, their tree trunks, um, just to place them. And then the mountains in behind, some overlaying mountains in the distance here. Okay, so now you are going to trace everything in your fine liner and I'm going to use uh, four which is sort of in between the trees I will use the uh, 08 micron pen and for all of the highlights on the windows the details of the cabin pointillism I will likely use the 02 so go ahead and trace everything and we will decide on what kind of trees we want to do for ours. Okay, for the trees, I've decided to do the, the third tree that I've drawn. Um, so it's I don't really have a, a technique. It's kind of like a little little wobble here and a little wobble here of my pen. And um, I'm just kind of doing little curvy ink blobs, really, and um, varying them. So it's a very slight, skinny tree. So you can, it's almost like a triangle. So what you could do is with a pencil draw a very tall skinny triangle and then do this technique inside the triangle so similar to how we've drawn a circle and we're keeping all of our drawing inside the circle you could do the same thing inside a triangle just to help you keep that tree shape because i've done this tree um, this style of tree over and over again um, I'm used to keeping it in that general shape but if you needed a help that's a good trick or a tip to to help you so I'm gonna do three of the same trees up to you if you want to do a mix and match of um, different trees you can do more than three you can do um, a few of them way off in the distance of your mountains but just for a um, just for demonstration sake, I'm just going to do three trees. And when you're doing them, try to uh, alter the height of them. So bring the trunk maybe a little bit closer on a hill, um, make it slightly bigger, or um, put one, um, the trunk further away from the previous one, make it slightly smaller, just to look that some are in the distance, um, or up close to us, or different heights. Not every tree is gonna be exactly the same height. So just to give it a little bit of interest to the eye, you can alternate the, the sizes of the tree. Okay, so I've just traced the uh, rest of the mountains there in the back behind the trees. I left those in pencil just to just in case um, 
I didn't know where exactly they were going to go after I drew the trees, so um, you can do the same thing. Now I've got my very fine detailed micro pen, so you can see the lines on this are much smaller and you could really do some really fine detail work with this. I think they even get smaller than this one, but I've, um, I've just got the three of them. Um, so I'm just adding some shading and details on the smoke in the chimney here. And then the, the house, the ski chalet looks really flat just as it is. So once we get some details and do some highlights or glazing on the windows here, it's really going to bring it to life. So have a look what I do with my windows and, you know, adding some wooden boards to the, the, the front of the house. It's really going to give it a lot more character. Okay, on the snow, you can see I've also um, did some hatching um, on the snow just to just to make it more three-dimensional looking. Now for the moon, I'm doing a different technique. I'm doing pointillism. So the more dots you put closer together, like you can see on my sun on the template, the the I guess the darker it is, the shadow. So. On the dark side of the moon, I am doing a lot of pointillism dots and just a few scattered around the moon. So I encourage you to try this technique and you can even Google pointillism art to see some amazing artists who only specialize in that form of art. Okay, now for the mountains, I'm going to do some snow-capped styling here and I'm going to fill these up with some shading techniques and then on the rolling hills here, so the sort of the, the foot hills, if you will, I'm going to do some cross hatching on here just to indicate that they're round and not flat. So I'll do the same for this side. Okay, so now all you have to do is erase the pencil lines if you wish, and then we'll go ahead and paint the sky. Now I'm just using art paper. You could have used watercolor paper, but art paper still is uh, thick enough to do this technique. So I'm doing a wet on wet technique with the watercolor. So first I am wetting the paper. Now you need to be careful to stay inside or outside of the lines of your drawing it won't it won't bleed like you can go over top of the marker if you want um if you've used the permanent ink the waterproof ink but i don't want i'm just doing like a northern light sky and i don't want these colors to bleed on top of the mountains or the chalet or into the smoke so i'm leaving everything black and white but just the sky in the color so you could have done like a sunset sky or a blue sky but i'm going to just do a little bit of color play here and make a northern light looking sky or like a galaxy sky so very carefully just keeping it inside the circle as well as outside of the mountains in the moon <music> So you can see all these beautiful colors they've kind of bled in together love that kind of liquidy unpredictable look of the sky and certainly northern lights and uh, galaxies have that look about them so just have fun with your color play and usually greens and blues work really well together even some yellows and then your pinks and purples so this is pretty much it. Now you might need to let this dry for a few minutes or you could use a hair dryer to speed up the process. And all that's left to do is to take a white paint marker. I love these Posca pens. 
Um, you can just use a little toothpick or a Q-tip and some white paint as well, or even the end of a paintbrush would be the best option to use and just do a couple of dots. So you can see the areas that are dry stay nice and neat, a tiny little star, and then ones that are wet kind of spread and bleed. So I don't mind that look. It looks like it's glowing there. You can kind of see the difference between the two, but I quite like it. So um, you can erase the pencil line there if you like, or go around it with a permanent marker. It's up to you, but that's pretty much the artwork. So can't wait to see what you've created. I always love to see. So you can email me or tag me um, or upload it to that Facebook community group and love to see your work.